Good morning, everyone. It's me again. Welcome back to my channel. Please hit subscribe and like. And I would like for you to enjoy some more of these clips of me going around New York. And here is Tribeca. Some of the audio is missing, but there's still fun footage. I decided this day I was going to go downtown and on the boat, which is the Staten Island Ferry. It is free. I recommend if you do it, that you do it. <laughs> LOL, if you're here. Here's me leaving my neighborhood in the South Bronx, entering Upper Manhattan, and here is the view. So the Staten Island Ferry is free. I recommend it whether you're visiting New York for the first time or if you live here. I really don't know much what else you can do other than enjoy the city for free. So that's the point of my channel is to share some tips and tricks with you. One of the best parts about the ferry is you get to see the Statue of Liberty from, I would say, one of the best perspectives you can. And here is the skyline approaching from Staten Island. That is downtown Wall Street area and Financial District. And now we're panning over into Brooklyn Hello, boat. How you doing? This is actually the clip of us, I believe, heading to Staten Island instead of returning. But you can see that you also see New Jersey over on the west side of the city, across from the Hudson River. And there's Lady Liberty again with her torch, which is catching a little bit of sun. And once again, Brooklyn. And then you see the Brooklyn Bridge, Manhattan Bridge and downtown. There's one more the trade center in the back, in the rear, some housing in the front, and over to Jersey. So I think I'm gonna go to the front of the boat and just show you around. The place is really clean. recommend that you look up when you're exploring Soho. The 
facades on these buildings are cast iron, and it's from an era that was rarely preserved. And this is one of the largest collections, I believe, in the world of cast iron architecture. So here we are walking up Barrow Street and we're gonna turn on to Commerce. This is probably one of my favorite intersections in the village, if not the whole city. There's just something about the scale of it, especially, like I always say, come off peak hours. Early morning or afternoon sunset, if that's your thing and you're not a morning bird, I definitely am. But look at it, I mean, it's amazing without the people. You get great pictures, you get to really enjoy the space all on your own. It almost feels like you're visiting a movie set, which I personally like that quality about it. The scale is just really interesting compared to everything else in the city, which is so big. These two buildings are iconic to me and historic. The Cherry Lane Theater, beautiful. If you're into performances, I highly suggest it. I haven't been, but I have seen what they have and it, the offerings are really, really high end for such a small scale theater and, you know, incredible talent performs here. But look at the light just streaming in. Look at the streets. You have them to yourself. I just, you know, you really can't beat the West Village in the morning or the afternoon. It can get really packed with tourists. And if that's your thing, that's totally okay. But for me, this is the ideal time and way to experience the neighborhood. Hey, Birdie, what's up? I personally love New York pigeons. It's part of the city. People don't like them, whatever. Do you. Anyway, what can you find in the West Village? Incredible architecture, picturesque quiet streets, historic properties, and great restaurants and great bars. So everything is small scale, intimate, and really high end. This property is historic, it's I believe Home to Edna St. Vincent Millay, who is a Pulitzer Prize winner for poetry. And she wrote My Candle Burns at Both Ends, or Two Ends, I believe. Uh, anyway, check it out. Perfect light. You can't beat it. Ah, the Little Owl. Some of you may know it as a great restaurant. Others may know it as the building that Friends was using the exterior. This little place right here over to the left has great Middle Eastern flatbreads and here's a little time lapse of my favorite corner on Hudson Street. Sit out here on the weekends especially and just watch the people go by so i'm gonna go ahead and do that with you now charles and hudson is one of my favorites in the city i don't know why but look how cute this is super charming hello but yeah this one is legit good Here, it's super clean too. Hold on, look. 
and spacious, which is something you don't get a lot of. Taking your dog for a walk or brushing your cat's hair or reading or swimming or surfing or whatever any of the activities are. But honestly, it's these little activities that you do by yourself that I really think allow you to find some peace in the day and just really make a big difference in I just, uh. Sorry, it's just so pretty here. And just really are the ones that are worth investing the time in. So, you know, life tip that you probably already know, but I figured I'd ask. So beautiful. village This is my old street and we're walking up to my old apartment building which oh, dear to my heart was a special place some of the best memories I had in the city My old home that's where I used to live Oh. Anyway, so I thought I'd figure I'd talk to you about why I like to go for walks because a lot of my friends always make fun of me for saying, why are you up so early? Why do you go out? Why don't you ever stay in? Why don't you rest? I'm a really anxious and nervous person with a lot of extra energy. And for me, it's an opportunity to release that some of the energy when the city is still asleep and quiet, a certain here. And more than anything, it's, exercise and really it's an opportunity to see New York to yourself by the way that's my old apartment up there on that fire escape but it's an opportunity to see the city like nobody else gets to see it before it wakes up and also and also hold on oh no but more importantly, it's free. There's not a lot of free things to do in the city. And this is probably one of the most entertaining things you can do in New York that doesn't cost you any money. It just costs you effort and it's highly rewarding. And it's an opportunity to clear your thoughts, gather your thoughts and kind of work through whatever kind of stuff you've been trying to resolve in your head. I think they call them deep walking. It's, you know, uh, look it up, it's really interesting but it's a way to filter and process things on your own independently. Well, do an exercise. So, I mean, you can't beat it. Uh, love it. So here is a shot from before the last ones you just saw entering the West Village on 13th Street. And again, find out what you want to do in these neighborhoods. I would say the East Village, Greenwich Village, and West Village. You kind of want to decide if you want to go in the morning or in the afternoon, or if you're fine with the tourists, then in the middle of the day will work. But really, I think that at these hours with less people, you really get to appreciate the area and take time to be able to notice the small details, which normally would be easy to miss because you're distracted by all the commotion. Um, they're very popular, especially on the weekends. So I really say give it a shot. Find out what you're trying to see and what you want to do. Plan ahead. And really, you know, go ahead. Give it a shot to go in the mornings. You might really appreciate it and really be able to see the city in a completely new light.
Welcome to the west side, upper west side. So this is a really great, quiet, neighborhood, family-oriented kind of area in Manhattan. I used to live here for a while. I really like it. And I would say that my favorite thing about it is where, that in fact, it's where You've Got Mail was filmed. So a lot of the locations in the movie and a lot of the buildings and stores and shops are all in this neighborhood. So every time I'm here, it's a throwback to when I lived here and also to that movie, which I love, which is one of the first films that really made me dream about living in the city. And I don't know, it just has like this energy. There's cute bookshops and grocery stores, some of my favorite little charming places. And I don't know, I just really recommend it if you're here. And especially if you're a fan of the movie, definitely look up the places where it was filmed and I would go see those. Maybe I can do a video on those. Um, a few of them are still here. Actually, most of them are still here, but it would be a fun thing to do. Anyway, here you go. I kind of, we can get into another story. My love for Brooklyn has, uh, took a long time coming. Uh, but now I love it and it's great. There's a good vibe, good energy. Some neighborhoods are more interesting than others, but there's just really so much to do here. And as far as food and activities, and actually the shopping is really good too. There's more of um, flexibility in terms of shopping. You get more options out here than you do in the city. And anyway, it's just day, Sunday, and I'm excited to check things out and see what's going on. And we back in the train, and definitely the beach did not work that day. It was so crowded, and I had to turn around and head back into the city. Thank you. 